We got a few questions answered this week, but more questions posed as always. I want to break down some things I noticed. I want to talk about your comments from my last video, and this is my third theory video on the silo, so if you haven't done it already, maybe check out the first two theory videos. But first of all, thanks for taking the time to choose to watch this video, I really appreciate it. If you haven't done it already, or you are a repeat watcher, please subscribe to the channel. It's only a small click for you, and it means the entire world to me. We're always posting more videos all the time, not just on the silo, Star Trek, Marvel, loads of stuff, it's coming. Anyway, before we get into this one, I want to talk about my last video because I mentioned there's quite a lot of circles in the silo and they're getting quite a lot of focus. Now, this weekend, friend of the channel, Alicia Brenner, pointed out to me on Twitter that Apple TV are actually promoting the silo and highlighting all the circles in it. So I guess we were right about that one, so you know, if you supported my theory on that, well done us, and if you didn't, that's fine as well. Before I get into what happened this week, I want to talk about my ongoing thoughts on this show, because one thing I keep thinking about is what happened to the Rebels. They can't all have been killed, because how would you identify all of them when the population of the silo? So again, I keep thinking that this is maybe the Rebels that we're seeing they did win and that's why history was covered up. I'm not too sure on that, I'd say I'm 50-50 at the moment, they've not kind of lent into it either way. And also the end of this week's episode kind of nixed that idea, but I'll get to that later on. So another question that's been brought up this week that hasn't really been focused on too much is where's the hard drive? There's not even been a hint of it or what's on it. And what is on it anyway? Well, it's probably some, if not all, of the history of the silo. But what do you guys think? What is on the hard drive? If you've read the books, don't post any spoilers, please. But yeah, I'm really interested to know what do you think is going to be on there. And speaking of the hard drive, there's been all the clues that Juliet's had to follow. Now, all this is good and fine for the plot of the story, but what happens if Juliet gets killed? I mean, if her life's in jeopardy, will she repeat the same steps of Holson to preserve the clues? You know, kind of like a circle, like I keep going on about. But let's get into the real meat of the episode, and I want to start with Judicial and those relics. So why are they keeping them? Why not destroy them? And why keep a track of their history? In fact, why track it at all? What's the benefit to them of keeping these items, and then them getting back out into circulation in the silo? Well, give me a minute because I want to break this one down. So, we've seen quite a few relics over the show. Some of them are obviously clearly important, like the book. Others, not so much like the Pez dispenser. So, I don't think that every relic is going to be really that relevant. It's the existence of the relics themselves. Some of them are valuable, some of them are just tat. So then, go back to the question, why keep a record history of just old rubbish? Well, think about it. It's to help root out anyone that wants to look into the history of the silo. If you keep the relics about in circulation, you can use them to track and find people who are curious. So once you find them, you have them, you clean them, or you know, you imprison them in the mine or whatever, you hold on to the relic for a few years, then put it back out onto the black market, back into circulation, and repeat the process. You know, again, like a circle. But yeah, what do you think about that? Because the fact that some of these relics are literally useless means that they have no value whatsoever, so I don't get why they're keeping them around, but that to me makes sense. But as always, let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, one thing's been bothering me about the silo since episode one, and it wasn't really until this week I realised what it was. It's the entrance to the silo itself. So if we go back to episode 1 and 2, we did see the outside, or at least what we assume is the outside of the silo. And then this week we learned that the silo's population is about 10,000. Now, look at this, that's one small door. So that got me thinking that maybe this wasn't the way in. Maybe they came in through the tunnel. So that's why maybe all the relics are at the bottom with the digger, they weren't just being kept there safe. And also as well, if they ever had to leave the silo, it's a very small door to get 10,000 people out of. So it plays into the fact again that there's no long-term plan to leave this place ever. And as well, that the tunnel might have been flooded. So the tunnel might have been a way in that's been flooded rather than a way out. 
Or maybe I'm thinking about this all wrong. I'm assuming the silo was completed before it was occupied. What if it started as a lot smaller and then it grew? They expanded it until they couldn't any further. Because, yeah, I don't know about you, but I have always thought that this has been a totally complete structure when people started living in it. But what if it wasn't? What if it was just partially finished and then they just created the rest of it and filled out the space over the time? I'm not too sure about that because that would be going all the way back right to day one or even before day one. So I don't know if they're going to give us that much history. But yeah, there's a lot of like, the early history of the silo that I'm very interested in. So let's talk about the book then that was sort of a kid's guide to Georgia. So Georgia, George, is he named after it? Also we see a few other names in the book. Gloria is one. So is it the Gloria that's already appeared in the show? Probably. And yeah, it's probably the reason that George is named Georgia as well. But the fact that there's names in the book, it's tracking its heritage like Sims tracks the history of the other relics. So will we see the previous owners of the book in flashback? I certainly hope so, because considering it's over 140 years old at least, it's in incredibly good condition, so it has been looked after. Now, again, to the whole fact that Juliet's now learned that there's life outside or even before the silo in my review, so I'm not going to talk about that. But there's one or two other mysteries that I want to get into that I think might tie together. So, the note from Holston about the flowers in the mirror. Now, you might not have noticed it in this episode, it was very subtle, but the mirror in the sheriff's office was pretty huge. There was a lingering shot of it when Juliet was leaving with a vase of flowers there. Then at the end of the episode, you could see whoever was monitoring it was doing it through the mirror. So it was used twice as a sort of framing device. And this big reveal at the end of the monitoring lets us know that's why people are turning on taps or fans when they're speaking. They know that people are listening. So that's why Holson wanted the flowers at a certain position in order to block this monitoring. And let's talk about the monitoring itself because this room, the level of tech we see at the end of this episode is closer to ours, if not beyond it. I've mentioned a few times that the tech in the silo looks to be about early 80s or 90s and the tech that we're seeing in this room seems to be a lot more advanced. Now is that on purpose? Probably. And is this room the janitor's closet? I think so. But there is also another threat in the silo that I think might be a little bit of a twist or a reveal. Regina mentioned that she was threatened by a man that only comes at night. And who else do we keep seeing at night? Lucas. We don't know much about him, but he keeps popping up. He doesn't seem to live by the normal cycle of the silo and has a lot of time in his hands. Now, it might mean that he works 95 in IT or admin or something like that, but he also mentions that he travels between levels to get a better view. So what does he do in the silo that he's got all this time on his hands? I mean, I did think that he was the guy that they were going to get at the end of the episode, but again, I think that's probably Sims or Bernard. But yeah, I think Lucas is probably going to be far more interesting than he appears to be. He didn't really get a lot to do this week, but there's definitely a bit more to this guy. At least that's what I think, but I want to know what you guys think. What's the relevance of the book? Is it just a book? What about the relics? Are they being used as traps? Let me know in the comments below. And I want to go over some of your comments from my most recent videos. So Mr. Art posts, I've got too many questions. It's been 140 plus years, so everyone was born in there. I don't believe Sims has access to the outside of the silo, or maybe he's fooling me. Bernard, after not liking Juliet, now he did a strange 180 and even helped her on this episode. And why he keeps insisting that he just wants to be in charge temporarily. I want to say, to say that the silo is an experiment and that the people that walk finish it like being pulled out of the matrix or something like that. Now yeah, I kind of agree with you because a lot of people are saying that Silo reminds them of the movie Snowpiercer or the TV show, but to me it reminds me more of Zion in the Matrix. So I think you kind of might be onto something there. I've had that idea for a while, but as we've not got any more information on the outside, I didn't want to go into it too much. But yeah, good questions there. 
So Silver Scale says, I think the reason the silo people aren't getting rid of the relics is because some people in the silo, perhaps the shadow organisation in the janitor's closet, is trying to figure out the history and life outside the silo, but super on the down low behind most people's backs. That's why they aren't being such spooks about it and not destroying the no-no items. And yet, I said that in this video, I kind of agree with that. I think there's definitely something else going on with the relics. So thanks for your comment. Colonel Clank said what department in the silo would have the better CCTV tech we saw at the end of episode 6. I think it's probably IT, but that's just a guess. I guess we're going to find out this week. DM Tristan says, FYI, as a book reader, I can tell you that the syndrome is not in the books, so we are just as intrigued as you. And yet, I've heard that from people on Twitter as well. I've not mentioned it yet, really, because they've not mentioned it, but yep, definitely something I'm keeping an eye on. Gamer Dad says, I think in its experiment with cloning people, the syndrome is clones that didn't work and their DNA scrambled, so they need to be eliminated ASAP before more people of the DNA are born, and cause even more worse mutations also explains why breeding is so carefully monitored and not just for population control. And you could be right, I've just said it in my last one, the syndrome isn't in the book so it's anyone's guess at this point. Zoe Catherine says, glad to see you're still doing videos after seeing your first silo video. You were at the top of my YouTube page when I opened it up. Thanks, Zoe. What, that, wow, what, that, that's really cool. So thanks for letting me know about that because obviously I don't search my own channel. And I hope you keep watching the videos and subscribe if you haven't done it already. Senior Hot Pants, or maybe it's Senior Hoot Pants. Maybe silos are underground towns, so there could be a world full of silos all connected. And I kind of think you might be right about that. I mean... Especially with my idea of the fact that the rebels maybe control this silo, it could have been cut off from others. But yeah, we're going to have to wait and see on that one. Now, I do try and reply, or at least like, all the comments that I get on my videos because I really appreciate them. But I don't have the time to do it for everyone, so if I do miss you out, I do apologise. And if I haven't read out your comment, I might do it. In fact, I was thinking about doing a video and just questions and comments and theories just from you guys. So if you'd like to see that let me know in the comments if you'd like me to read your comments and as always if you've made it this far please leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you've not done it already you can also follow me on twitter at the geeks reviews as always my name's al and don't go outside <laughs>